I'm trying to build a new LEGO factory to assemble robotic mechs for every Series 23 minifigure, but will it be enough to save our LEGO city from disaster? Let's find out. You all thought we forgot about this figure, but there's no way I could pass up on a gem like this. She's got a lot of really fun printing that looks like someone just scribbled permanent marker all over their Lego, because obviously she's not a real robot, she's a human dressed up in a cardboard robot costume that the comments named Sherry. I remember having so much fun with cardboard boxes as a kid, turning them into forts, time machines, and even my own robot costume. All you need is a little imagination and you can make anything, including a prototype of the factory we'll be building for Sherry to live in. I want it to be a new and improved version of the yellow robot robot factory from our last city, hopefully using power functions to get some actual movement in there. And although I won't be producing robots like Sparky this time, we do have a ton of new robo friends here, like Shiny, Woody, and a lot more that will be working at this factory instead, led by the robot repair tech. I ordered a boatload of these rare medium azure bricks to match Sherry's color scheme and got right to work figuring out a foundation that will fit in the last remaining plot of our Lego city called 23ville. Hopefully there'll be room to stage some of the mechs in here later on, but for now I built up the first layer of the walls using these spring-loaded shooters pieces for an interesting pattern. Then I sorted my pieces, cause that pile was a mess, and started the walls on the front, on the back, and on the sides. Leaving gaps for a door on each side here, a garage door we'll have to figure out later, and this gap. I also stacked up a bunch of round bricks as pillars for each of the corners, but just look at this. I absolutely love making walls like this as detailed as physically possible, sometimes to an obsessive degree, but what I don't love is the fact that now I have to figure out this thing. I'm attempting to use this Lego motor to power a working conveyor belt, but... We'll see how that pans out. The reason we were a bit lazy with the last factory's belt is because power functions kind of scare me. But I finally decided to face my fear and give this a spin. One hour later. Alright, obviously I'm gonna make this look better later, but we've got Fiery here to help test out my first design. And, okay, no, that is terrible. It goes way too fast, and this battery box is gigantic. Like, where am I supposed to put this thing? So we're gonna completely ignore facing my problems for now and come back to this later. After working on the wall some more. See, there we go. There we go. There. There we go. It's like therapy. We have a new hole to talk about, and I still have to add something here, but there's nothing like pretty colors to distract me from actually using my brain. Well, I shouldn't say that, because some of the detailing techniques I used are pretty big brain, if I do say so myself. Like, here I used orange brick separators that attach right on the side of the walls. These gears all turn each other in a really satisfying way. I've literally been doing this for 20 minutes. And you never think to use Lego carrot pieces in an industrial build like this, but the orange part works surprisingly well for piping and stuff. I should use this technique again sometime. But anyways, this hole here is for a slide you can insert in there with relative ease, no problem. You put objects like Barky in through the top and they land on the conveyor belt where... <laughs> You know what, I'm not emotionally ready for that. Let's work on the garage door instead. Which should hopefully be easier because LEGO actually makes garage door segment pieces that you can clip together into this really cool wave machine that fits between these bricks with grooves. Which I unfortunately only have in white, but I tried my best to cover them up. It's kind of finicky now, but once we- But once we build this frame into the structure of the roof, it should work better. Hopefully. But at least Googly here is impressed with it either way. Just the coolest thing he's ever seen, apparently. This darn conveyor belt could be really cool too, but not using this setup. So I got the old 22 build train engine and stripped it for its parts. Now we've got a smaller battery box that makes it go a little bit slow. It's still not great, but using this remote control and receiver, we can adjust the speed even further to finally make it manageable. This is Honey. Wait, okay, there we go. And now she can ride the conveyor without violently flying off the end for once. Oh, this is gonna be great. So I made it look a little better, and to stop them from falling down behind and getting stuck, I also added this railing on the side, making it impossible to fall off. But I don't want all the electronics just dangling off to the side of the factory, so I tried to squeeze them all into this corner. It looks absolutely ridiculous, but it's still functional for humans. This thing is not minifig scale at all. It takes two figs or four robots to even reach the conveyor belt. So I built a small staircase up to a platform that makes it easier to access for them and the previous owners of the factory, Santa's elves. This place used to be a wrapping facility. Not to be confused with a wrapping facility, that's a separate factory. Where the elves would package all the presents made in the workshop before the elf on the shelf virus kind of shut down their whole operation. Sherry was devastated when Santa never brought her a present this Christmas. He's still knocked out, by the way. So she decided to mail herself to the North Pole to check on it. Not the greatest plan, but she dressed up as a toy robot and had a receipt, hoping they would think she's just a gift being returned. Sure enough, a few days later, she arrived at the wrapping factory, only to find it completely abandoned. She snuck her way to Santa's workshop and discovered all the elves and Santa himself being held hostage by the elf on the shelf, who was about to put its final plan into motion. But I need to finish the factory before I can explain what this plan actually is, so let's wrap this up. You may have noticed earlier when the conveyor belt just exploded that this front wall is removable, like in the original, and that allows us to better see inside to the interior, which needs some work. This whole area can just be completely covered up. 
Wow, this is so much better. No one wanted to see that. I'm not gonna be able to cover up all the random orange bits and gaps on the inside created by the <laughs> excessive amount of exterior detail, but we can try to make the best of it. Like on this peg, I attach a robotic arm to assist with the conveyor, an air conditioning unit over here. And since you're never gonna see the back of this wall, I'm literally gonna make the same joke twice. Our last factory had some minor issues with pollution. Sorry, Specky. So this one is going green. We'll have solar panels on the roof later and recycling bins here for when the factory switches to cardboard box packaging this year. Even though it's widely unpopular, popular, kind of anti-consumer, and we'll have plastic bags inside the boxes anyways, defeating the point of- <clears throat> I mean, Sherry wanted to make more costumes out of cardboard boxes, I guess, so what are you gonna do? Plus, this robot named Canny is recyclable, and that's just adorable. But now while I'm tiling off the entire floor, let's speed run through all the rest of the robo friends to get them out of the way. We've got Sushi, Nutty, Lemony, Starry, Sarky, Sesame, Sussy, Patchy, Speedy for the robot repair tech, a freshly wrapped Rappy for Sherry, and Mo. We have a ridiculous number of these guys now. And I want to try putting them all through the slide at once. Well, that was beautiful. Just like this fancy flooring. It looks so much better than plain studs would. And there's spots to attach minifigures, robo friends, this workbench with actual blueprints for once, and an upgraded spinny platform to display some of the smaller mechs we build later. As much as I want to say that wraps up the interior, we actually need to change the sign to match the current output of the factory. That makes a huge difference. And with a removable roof featuring a built-in skylight that casts a cool blue glow inside, these solar panels, and two of the smokestacks from last time, we're finally able to start making the mechs. Uh, let's get on that. So I fired up the conveyor belt, dumped some parts of the slide, and had the multitude of robo friends do their thing. Look at this! Got a relatively simple cockpit for Sherry with posable legs and arms. I tried to make something Lego might actually sell because I'm submitting this project to Lego Ideas. If it gets 10,000 supporters, this factory could become a real Lego set that you could buy in stores. But I need your help to get there. If you could click on that link in the description after the video and go upvote the project, I would really appreciate it. It's free and only takes like a minute. But I'd say the factory has a solid chance of actually being being made because Lego does like to use this color scheme and we all know they love their mech sets. Bionicle, Mixels, Ninjago, the entire Marvel lineup this year. Pretty much every theme these days features at least one mech set so why not Lego Ideas? Either way we have a lot of inspiration to pull from for the rest of the mechs and not a moment too soon. This nearly completed city is looking amazing but it's had one big problem since the beginning. The elf on the shelf. A computer virus that's been spying on the citizens and determined that no one is worthy of being on Santa's nice list. People willing to to lie, steal, cheat, and neglect their duties don't deserve presence in the elves' eyes. They deserve to be disposed of. Sherry was understandably shaken when she heard this plan, so she enlisted the help of the local homeless robotics expert and got to work transforming the abandoned facility into what you see today. Now it's time to use it to build mechs for the rest of the citizens and stop this menace once and for all. The first figure to recruit is Ruby. She proved herself capable of leading Santa's sleigh, so I wanted to incorporate the actual sleigh into her mech. I flipped the seat around to form a cockpit that we can attach arms, legs, and antlers onto. You know what, actually? Reindeer hands. Oh, this is almost as amazing as- Reindeer feet. Okay, we need to stop before this thing gets too powerful. God. All right, this thing looks nothing like a sleigh anymore, and I could not be happier. Welcome to the squad, Ruby. As they were looking for the next recruit, Eve burst out of the workshop, locking the door behind her. Apparently she had a key that she snuck out at night with. But anyways, I made her a better version of that awful snow globe that she can now fit inside, and obviously turned that into a mech. It's pretty simple, but I like it, and it's so satisfying to spin. Oh, not sure what this bag is for, but Eve's definitely doing something behind Santa's bag. Who, by the way, still needs to be rescued. The elf on the shelf is forcing them to build some monstrosity inside there. We gotta step up our game. So Eve introduced the group to her friend Susie the Fairy, who apparently is able to make objects come alive. Wait, what if we just like... Okay, I guess this is Susie's mech now. We can even give it a little frosting tiara that matches hers. We are gonna need names for all these mechs in the comments, by the way, but to mix up this all-girl squad I accidentally made, we need a man, me the snowman. Another creation of Susie's, and since just using his house as a mech would be way too big, I made a mini version of it that he can fit inside. Oh, that's cursed. But I'm loving this lineup so far. Meanwhile, after a long battle, Chester the Nutcracker finally vanquished his foe, and needing a new challenge, volunteered his services to the cause. I'll be repurposing this Lego Nutcracker as his mech, with legs that actually crack nuts, kind of, and a sword striking fear into the hearts of mice, and hopefully the elf on the shelf as well. But we gotta get cracking first. Nellie and her new ally Charlotte wanted in too. Their recently joined factions have been crafting a genius battle plan to stop the elf. And Sherry's mechs are just the thing they needed. We're obviously giving Charlotte a dragon themed mech. I mean, that's like a requirement. But I thought a knight mech would be kind of boring, so to match her hobby horse, Nellie's getting a Trojan horse instead. She can ride it, hide inside it, and the middle section is removable, just like Lego horses, where it then transforms into whatever this is. 
Rafik's elf is going down. As long as everyone works together. You're under arrest. Agent Murphy explained that Susie matched the description of the girl who pushed Winston into the ocean that day of the birthday party. That's her all right. Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, with Susie locked in the castle, I guess now's the time to build Winston a wolf mech. This thing is just so chonky, I love it. And we can arm it with a leaf blower for the blow test. Okay, well, we're gonna do that to the elf. After we get to the bottom of this mystery, Winston revealed that he was a passenger on Ed's cruise ship. And speaking of Ed, out of all 100 boats we tested for him, as much as I want to put legs on this thing, my personal favorite was Just a Doug. So of course we have to turn it into Just a Doug Meg. I mean, it may not float, but it is beautiful. Only a few more to go. And Ed wanted to check in on his friends at Tom's homeless shelter. You've actually seen his mech before. I mean, this is already perfect. Unfortunately, there just isn't time to make a mech for every 22-ville citizen. This video has taken long enough as is. Both the Robot Repair Tech Rebuilt Sparkzilla tutorial for this thing finally linked in the description. And since you guys met the Habitat fundraising goal, we built a bonus house over here for the Forest Elf, Shroom, Buff Shroom, Chad Shroom, and Giga Chad Shroom. So, not much else you could ask for. Plus, the Forest Elf's brother already has a mech. Ed, the former Snow Guardian. Brother! Absolutely no one saw that one coming. But anyways, when his cruise had first made a stop at 23ville, Winston got his bag mixed up with someone else's. And just as he realized, it was too late. Instead of his normal party favors inside, there was just a toy nutcracker instead. Hey, don't look at me, they're just because they're incriminating him. It was me! I did it! Yeah, see? Eve explained how she's been stealing toys from Santa's workshop for months, selling them off to Susie so she could bring them to life in exchange for candy. This included a toy nutcracker, reindeer, knight, dragon, and turkey. She'd hide the bag around the city for Susie to pick up until Winston got in the way. But why? I'll show you why. Now, everyone! She had awakened an army of mindless serpents, able to do her bidding. What about stopping the elf? There's not much time left! I'm not scared of that thing, or anyone else! Except the one time that stupid kid almost blew my cover as... Susie Jenkins. No. We meet again. That's right, posing as a human <laughs> girl, Susie had used Cornelius to get inside the theater, where she could transform her first two toys. And I didn't appreciate that! After being trapped in there for months, forced into hard labor, and missing his own birthday party, Cornelius was finally reunited with his parents. And they promised not to let anyone separate them again. With his popcorn mech all ready to go, we've got a city to save. Some of the smaller mechs went ahead to draw the elf on the shelf out of hiding, where the heavy artillery waited further back to take it out, saving Santa's workshop and disabling the explosive. They're only gonna get one shot at this, so it better work. With the elf finally defeated, Sherry climbed up the workshop to defuse the bomb. And to shut this thing down for good, let's activate that subscriber-powered kill switch. Oh wait, we didn't get enough subscriber. Everyone, get on the boat! 